So it shouldn't be doing this. As you can see, uh, the oil coming from there to there to there. And it had to do this literally the first test drive after replacing this. All right, so yeah, uh, rear main seal is leaking. Literally, first test drive after changing the transmission. So, uh, finally got around to fixing this issue. I got my Cummins part number 3934486, which is the uh, rear main seal. It comes with, which I've never actually installed one of these, so uh, it has the plastic sleeve to help you uh, put it on. And then I also got this little guy, which is the upper arch seal of the cover, or something like that. It is part number 49476667. So I don't know which one, if it's that's leaking or this leaking or the upper part of the oil pan. So about to dig in, I am, uh, we'll get underneath. I've got transmission transfer case is down. I got that on the jack stand. All right, so I've got, uh, I'm starting to get, get my flashlight here. Uh, bell housing. I need to take that off. I need to take the clutch off. I took the slave cylinder there. The only issue I may find here as I crawl under here. So it's fun working underneath here. All right, right there. It's leaking. Uh, this is what it looks like at idle or not at idle. So after the test drive, this is what happened after I shut it down. So once the oil was returning to the pan, it was uh, leaking out the back. So we'll find out. Uh, so my only little issue here, oh man. Actually, with the four inches of lift, I can actually uh, sit up here. So if you can see that bolt there, I don't think I'm gonna be able to get that out. So what I'm gonna have to do is beat the body a good maybe half inch in which is fine that's just passenger your foot well don't have a lot of passengers so screw them uh, so I got two bolts out those the left those are all easy to get to I think let's look behind that oh nothing there so okay we're all good there uh, pull the starter I need to pull the starter I haven't done that um, yeah okay so that's what I got going right now. There's the, if you can see in there. Well, it's all messed up since I took the slave out. The clutch is all out of the way. All right, so I am uh, to the point of the flywheel. Uh, and as you can see, what I did was uh, I made these two pins out of some old bolts I had laying around. And then uh, it was stuck on there a little bit. So I just got the, just banged it around the side with a dead blow. And then now it's loose. and not gonna fall off I got those pins so um, yeah I'm ready to see what's behind this there better be a leaky rear main for me to fix or I'm gonna be really not uh, not very happy there it is rear main seal and whatever that thing is and an oil leak so it looks like to me it's coming out of the pan where it connects to this doohickey around here so this I don't remember what it's called I'm calling it doohickey the doohickey comes off the seal mounts to the doohickey and then I have that seal that goes around here I'll put some pookie down here change the rear main and then uh, start putting it all back together you can see it's splattering all over here so so that's a good sign that I'm actually seeing oil here because if I didn't see oil here and uh, 
funny story is my uh, buddy who I was telling him I was do this, he did this and then uh, realized that it was not from the rear main seal and from the upper valve cover. So I'm glad it wasn't from the valve cover. I did check that though. Alright, so I have the doohickey off. Um, it was pretty easy. I just stuck a screwdriver behind it after the bolts were out. Got it out. And get some light here. That is what it looks like without a rear main or that thing. And so my guess is it was leaking out the pan and you can see there is a gasket in there um, I don't know so I'll uh, it sucks because I can't take that whole pan off so what I'll probably do is put some pookie on it and reseal it and hope for the best clean it up get it in there um, and obviously replace the rear main and that gasket. So the other thing I got accomplished was the oil pan on my son's Jetta. Uh, he's not here right now. I'd show you the, what it skid plate I put on, but I'll show you where the oil pan cracked. Uh, if you can see that crack right there above where the drain is and you can see it there as well so you can see where he smacked it on the road and cracking it so this thing was a breeze to replace I wish all oil pans were this easy I mean, it literally took 10 minutes to get the bolts out put some sealant on the new one and threw it right back up and you know just waited overnight to fill it with oil and then he was ready to go wish everything on Land Cruisers lately would be that easy. So, uh, right now again, got everything spread out. Everything's all over the floor. Cleaned up the bell housing. There's the clutch. And here's the adapter plate. I got it over the flywheel at the moment. So I can figure out the best location for this sensor when i put the main rear main back on i'll uh put the adapter up and then look for an area that um nothing's in the way i can get to it easily and things like that and uh like my last video i was mentioning that everything i take off i try to make it easier to get on and off for the next time and the one of those things was that since I had to take the shifter tower back off, I mean, that was literally a five minute job to get the console off, undo the adapter, or not the adapter, but the trans cover, and then four bolts to take that off. Um, put a glove over the transmission, so nothing, no f wasps that are hanging out around here get in there, and uh, just make it easy. That already saved me time because I mean who would have thought literally 10 minutes after I finished the trans job that I realized hey I got to take it all apart uh, that would have really sucked if I've used pookie and or pookie sealant and put it all back to the way it was and then I just have a big mess again so I'm glad I did that all right it is Sunday and I am changing the rear main and starting to get it all back together so uh, Got the rear main holder out, and I'm about to knock out the old seal and install the new seal. So um, I'm gonna attempt with I got a punch and a brass drift. I'm gonna try the brass drift first. I don't have anything big enough to just knock that out.
and there we go. That worked. And there is the seal. This one I looked it up is a relatively cheap one. It's not a Cummins official one. So that tells me at some point this was uh, replaced before. Alright, so now I have a new seal. Put it in there. And this is my first time to do this kind. So it actually pushes in pretty good. Uh, you want to leave this plastic ring inside that helps it go over the crank and then I'm just going to bang it down with this installer they give you when you hear the loud bang on all sides that means you've bottomed out and your seal is installed uh. all right so after cutting the gasket everything lines up all the holes are lined up and I cut it about 10 times on each side just to make sure I was uh, not gonna cut too much um, so yeah, I'll probably use some just a smear of RTV just to hold that in place because when I move my finger it falls off All right, so I got all I did was uh, just smear some RTV Around with my finger. I didn't want to rule out a buildup. I just wanted enough to make it stick We'll see So now it is all stuck in place, glued down, and I'll put some pookie on the other side too when I'm ready to put it on. I'm going to put some pookie um, all along, god the light sucks in here, all along this edge and then around just to make sure it's sealed good. Alright so I got the housing on, the bad part is I don't know if you can see that right there you see where that seals messed up yeah so messed up the seal while I installed it so that means that $80 seal is toast so um, I probably should have done I've uh, watched some videos on the old YouTube and People were installing, resealing everything, installing the seal, and then putting it on. Looked pretty easy, but um, evidently it wasn't. It was kind of a chore. Maybe I hurried it a little bit. I don't know, but so now the direction showed actually you don't have to undo that. You pull the seal out um, with a, like a sheet metal screw and a slide hammer, which that seemed kind of weird. But, so now I'll reorder the $80 seal and pull this one out and start all over. Kind of sucks, but hey, that's what I'm used to. So, nothing's going further than that today, which sucks. Um, pretty bummed. But, hey, live and learn. Nothing, can't, nothing that can't be fixed. All right, round two of the rear main seal it is in uh, went to the parts store got a non Cummins one which you know I was getting impatient uh, didn't want to wait three four days to order one and the oh, I can't remember the brand offhand uh, it's the one I've watched in some of my video YouTube videos of the guys I trust uh, fell pro I believe uh, it went in no problem. It was actually easier to put the seal on with the retainer in. Um, so, yeah, as you can see, there's no 
all the way around. It's nice and even. Um, just banged it in with the seal driver, just like I did on this thing. So um, while I was getting the part, it took me about an hour. Uh, torqued these four bolts for the oil pan to 18 foot pounds. Uh, the six around the retainer, seven foot pounds. So I'm gonna call this done. Uh, now I'm gonna kind of work on getting the adapter back on, uh, flywheel, and then try to check to see where I want to put the, uh, what am I thinking? Uh, tack sensor, the probe. So there you go.